Hey, but you're the artist, or you are an artist. I always say I'm a craftsman, I'm a printer, I feel like a printer. When a drawing has been made on stone, the stone is receptive to grease. So whatever the artist had done, whether it is either with a crayon or a brush or whatever, it is greasy material for which the stone is receptive. Then I etch the stone. Etching the stone is actually not etching the image, it's etching the stone. It's making those parts of the stone that are not going to print no longer receptive for grease. That is, in short, the etching process. Then, whatever the materials they have drawn on the stone or on the plate are washed out and replaced by the ink. The plate or the stone are damped. The stone has now been turned into something which is water-loving instead of grease-loving, which is the opposite. Right? So by each time dampening the stone and then rolling over it with a, with a roller with greasy ink, the image grabs the greasy ink and the stone stays clean. That, in short, is the whole basis of lithography. Grease and water don't mix. It's not like doing a drawing on a piece of paper. It's not like doing an etching, there's similarities, but it's not. Uh, and so that very process of making the lithograph is the thing, one of the things that interests me about it. It is about the process. The process itself is part of the end result. I mean, you use these sort of waxy, um, greasy crowns on a stone. I mean, I find the stone an interesting thing in itself, the fact of where it comes from, the qualities of the stone. I like working on the stone, uh, making marks on it, removing marks, erasing marks, and so on. But then after you've made the marks on the stone, of course, there's uh, the problem of seeing what it looks like on a bit of paper. So you've got to then go through the whole thing of inking it up and getting the image onto a bit of paper, which is also in reverse when you see it. So you're working in reverse on the stone. Um, you know, just the process is an interesting one. Okay, you have it? Yep. I never tell an artist what he should be doing. Mm. Uh, I only tell him what he can do. I, I give advice on... Um, I, I show him possibilities, or I tell him about possibilities, which are sort of in his line. Right, huh? He may not pick it up. He may pick it up. I don't know. It's a bit light here. It's a bit mm. light there. That's sort of well, really you like those things. Oh, yeah, no, that's like good. That. I mean, it's yeah. sort of a fading yeah, As long as these... Really yeah, no, that's right. No, it's all very crisp in here yeah. and those yeah. areas which are really good. Then it sort of goes out of focus. Right. Focus is a very, you know, but it would be very fascinating to see what happens in there. Mm -hmm. you know, when you get to the point where you can tickle that up or whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Working with somebody that um, somehow transforms your ideas of, of what you have about how the thing should look. I'm talking about how the thing's inked up and the colours and to try and the colours to sort of match what you've got in your mind and so on is interesting. I mean, working there's a duality of working with somebody to produce the print. Um, is certainly one of the most interesting things about working with somebody like that. Um, it's a strange process. It's just the process. I mean, I'm hooked on. I mean, I, I, you know, meaning that it's it's just the way it sort of unfolds. The way the thing has a birth, a beginning, and then that sort of can be destroyed. The way the thing evolves, the the, the evolution of the, how an image sort of finally gets there or ends up being an end result is an intriguing one. Yeah, you cannot dominate. You cannot be dominant. The artist is dominant. The artist wants to do his work. I'm I'm only playing the role of making it comfortable for him and easy, and and getting that whatever he's done onto paper. But not by, uh, not by domineering, I think you frighten them and they get out of the studio and I won't do any work. No, not at all. Well, you have to be as loose as possible. Well, I depend on him to actually sort of pull all the prints and sort of make the additions and ink up the things and look after the stones and know how to operate the equipment and so on. There's absolutely no... Well, there's a little bit of thing of sort of after the things on the wall having a discussion about it to see what his feelings are or something, but basically all those sort of decisions are left up to me. So he purely is sort of somebody that 
uh, works on the stone and works on trying to get the things to look exactly how I want them to. But there is, of course, little overlaps. He likes certain things that often I don't. So it all started here, Fred, didn't it? Yeah, that's right, the very so, beginning. You know, the first day, it's a real scrambled thing. and then Didn't nothing happen in between? No, not no, no, here. But it before didn't seem it, black enough or something. Then, but you know, before it came there, it was different. There was, there was, there's another state somewhere. I don't know where. No, oh, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> one, uh, of the, one of the many states. <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah. That's not it, is it? So there's a lot of, a lot of um, ideas meant through this. Well, I mean, it's hard to believe that it's still the same stone and we've actually sort of eradicated, or I've eradicated so much, and you've sort of rolled it up so much that this thing is still sort of there, but it's not there. So it got to there, and then we rejected all of that, didn't we? Absolutely. Well, I did anyway. I didn't like it. You kept saying, um, hmm, interesting. That it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now From there, up... we move to uh, the blue one. There's one in a simple blue, which is the same, so that is not so interesting. Then, we've, then you wanted to put color in. So that is where the yellow comes in, in an oval. That's the first time the oval comes in, because the oval is not on the print, there's no oval in it. And there's another state where this is all... Um, oh, that is the, the real state. What is it? It's this one here. Right, so that's the final right? state. That, that is the final state. Right. I'm mostly thrilled in, uh, that's where we are. in the doing, in, in seeing things happen, in... Because I don't know what to expect. I have an idea. I know the art. Like in this case with John, I know his work. I like his work. I've invited him. We're doing this thing. Uh, it's all very hard to explain. But somehow I know that it's getting there. Each step and another step and another step. And it finally gets somewhere where I feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is what this guy is about. And then I get very excited. No, well, I've been working on a whole series of things for a long time, you know, in paintings, that uh, these pictures, these lithographs have come directly from those um, paintings. And uh, mainly, I suppose, they're about with ways of seeing or thinking about the world and so on. I mean, the landscape. I mean, I am basically, I suppose, a lot of ideas have come from marine-type environments, looking at the harbour, doing sa sailing boats and things. And, um, one of the things that I do like about the water is at night time when the thing gets dark and it shimmers and their reflection. And you can sit on the edge of the harbour and stare out into the black and the night and so on and uh, think about certain things that aren't necessarily to do with the thing you're looking at. There might be something that you've left in the studio on the wall that you're having a break from. And so your mind might be in one place, even though you're in another place physically looking at a view. So it's almost as if there's a duality going on between what goes on in your head that you can think about and see mentally and what you see visually.